prep table here that basically was running warm. And this, I think, is a Randall. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it is a Randall. So, um, these Randalls are notorious here. They got a box uh, coil down here for the box. And then they have a rail up here. Well, this little gizmo here is new to me. I haven't seen this before. This has got a little fan in here. And believe it or not, they got a thermostat. So it sucks that air in and helps distribute it around the top rail. The thermostat controls on the bottom here. So when you're reading through the instructions down here on bottom, it literally tells you that, you know, not only do we have a rail switch, and you got another thermostat here that you would normally use, but when using this little gizmo here to move around the air, that that also controls it. Now, it was set at number four, so I've still got to go through and check the refrigerant charge, because like I said, these are known for leaking. So what I got going on right here is not very impressive. We're basically in our measurement in between the pans here. You can feel it, it just does not feel like it's... Let's see if that makes a difference. Still just doesn't seem to make a difference at all. You can see our coil is not too horribly bad up there in front. But I've heard this thing kick on and off multiple times. I think our probe here has gotten either pulled out or something or another. Actually, it's kind of cold on the end. It's been shutting off and turning back on. So I'm gonna see where we're at here through this. I'm gonna see if we can shove it back up in there further. I have a feeling that it's supposed to be up there further in the uh, rail and it's not sensing temperature properly because of that. And you can see where the refrigerant comes on the back side here. It just basically comes across. You gotta watch out for this kind of stuff too here. Cause a lot of times what'll happen is They'll shove this thing back and it'll end up smashing that plug. All right, so we did a leak check real quick and I'm not finding anything. Usually our leaks are in here on this thing, which you can see the part up on top is definitely getting cold now that the vans have stopped and shut it down to do the test. But everything they're describing to me about it getting splotchy in certain areas where it's just frozen in certain areas, not everywhere across the rail and then my suction pressure when it's dropping down it's getting down to those little seven pounds everything's leading me towards being low on charge for some reason on these they don't put a uh, sight glass on it even though it has an accumulator on it our rail switch should be calling and it's not i've got the thermostat turned down all the way on this one i got it turned all the way down on the other one our rail is nowhere near where it needs to be at. Our box down below is around 41, which that ain't all that great. But the top rail is 60. So we're not really where we need to be at. So we need to adjust that off pressure there, because that's not good. So if we get a leak, we're gonna be sucking air in. So we gotta fix that. And then we gotta find out why, you know, it sounds to me like we got a thermostat bad. So now we gotta figure out which one it is. Got about 86 degrees going in here. I just blasted this coil out with nitrogen, so it's even better than what it was before. I hit it from the backside as well as the front. Backside got more out of it than what the uh, front did. Car's blowing it out. But, like I said, it looks to me like we got an issue with that thermostat, as generic as that sounds. I'm going to leave that pulled out and see if that rail starts to freeze up. They said they were having issues with it not freezing evenly, so. Between that and possibly refrigerant, I mean, refrigerant definitely cause uh, potentially uh, uneven freeze pattern. Okay, so our box is now down to temperature, 36. Rails dropped some, so it is coming down slowly. But they did say that it used to run good uh, when they first got it, which was about two months ago. So this comes back to the clues that I was talking about. You wanna make sure you question them and ask them what exactly is going on. My thought process has been, if it used to work good and it just stopped, then something's changed, whether it be the thermostat or refrigerant charge, whatever. Um, you know, 86 in here and it's around 100 degree uh, saturation temperature, that's not too extreme. I usually see it to be 20, sometimes even 30, especially it agrees over what your rim temperature is based off of how dirty the coil is and things like that. Now that's not the way to charge it. 
most accurate way is to pull it out, weigh it in. But in this instance right here, it's not necessarily practical to do it like that. So right now, I'm still waiting to see if this thing will come down. Because he said this thing would run all the way down to the point where it would freeze the food. And now it's not. So with that pulled out and that heat hitting it, it should tell me whether or not that's the thermostat. I do need to make an adjustment on this. All right, so I spoke with the factory. And he said, uh, get rid of the box. He said they've had problems with those. That's the reason why they don't use them no more. He said you just wire around it here at the switch, which we'll go ahead and do that real quick. And then uh, as far as the thermostat, he said since it's turning on and off, he goes, pull it out further. And I thought, really? So I'll pull it out and stick it back in until I get where I need it at. But I think I'm still going to order a new thermostat for it just in case. But he said even with the new one, you're still going to have to adjust it in and out of that little rail area that that... Uh, bulb goes into which is quite interesting so as I'm taking this apart this thing is hot as all get out so we're going to chop these wires off and get them nice and stripped back you can see the corrosion and stuff starting to uh, begin on it so basically like he said just unwire it from there and then chop it off inside the uh, rail silicone it shut so it's food safe and they had a plug in here that went up to the top and basically that's what we undid and then this over here is the stuff for the fan down in the cabinet, which I screwed up and cut, which is a good reason why you never chop all your wires off flush. If you do and you make a mistake like I did, you won't be able to repair it. So luckily I was able to put uh, butt, cr uh, butt crimps on there and uh, repair that. And they're nice and tight and strong and no problems with that at all. So, uh, so I do screw up every now and again, but what you do with it's what's important. So. Gotta tie this back in here with the neutral and then we're all good to go. Alright, so the wire ended up coming from the back there where the uh, penetration is so the refrigerant lines came down through here and originally went up there through the bottom of that. So we got all that cut out. Basically, um, I asked them if they cared whether we leave the little rubber thing in there and just cut it flush or they want silicone in there and they said they'd be okay with it just being cut flush. As long as it was dead, well, it's obviously dead now. We could always get them a, a plug for it like this right there. So I may get that when I come back. But for right now, that's what we got. So that's completely unhooked and the solenoid's doing its thing. I'm basically slowly adjusting that uh, thermostat out of there. They said put it in the middle position and just kind of adjust it until you get where you want. Kind of generic, but it makes sense. Um, I adjusted our low pressure switch here uh, a couple pounds. I gotta test that here in a little bit. But pressures look pretty decent. I'm not gonna add anything more to it. You can hear it clicking. So you know that the solenoid's working. All right, so as you can see, our top rail is now starting to freeze like it should. And basically, like I said, what we basically did was uh, adjust the uh, thermostat probe in there, remove that fan. The product's a little bit warm, so they're going to uh, pull that out here for long and put it in the walk-in until it brings it back down to temperature. The biggest thing I thought was kind of corny was they wanted you just to pull that out until you kind of could regulate it. And you can see where that wire went to the uh, fan on the back side, and then they said try to do it with that in about the middle position. So and this is your on and off switch. So all that stuff's still the same. Um, got a uh, new filter media on there because they are doing pizza and stuff here so there's a lot of powder, dust, uh, flour, stuff like that, um, getting everything done. But she's uh, still uh, working as it should. It cycled off one time and came back on so it is regulating temperature. I'm still going to recommend we replace that thermostat um, and then when we come back we can double check anything else that may need to look at. Um, so basically, run down, uh, we added about half a pound of refrigerant, adjusted our pressure switch because it was going into a negative, and mainly adjusted our temperature probe here, and then got rid of that box that also was uh, in control of that solenoid on top. And so our biggest issue was that top rail just wasn't wanting to run. Um, other than that, I don't know if it was really all that low. Half a pound ain't a whole lot. It holds uh, 40 ounces. So like I said, I didn't... Uh, didn't go extreme on that and uh, other than the one screw up I went ahead and let you guys see just for shits and giggles so you know I ain't perfect um, 
big thing on that is just make sure you leave the wires always long enough that you can always repair them if you need to or if you might need them in the future. So if you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. Until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one.